Hello everyone, this is my lecture on electron transport chain complexes 3 and 4. In uh, our previous lecture we discussed the composition of the electron transport chain and we also looked at the electron transport chain complexes 1 and 2 and, and in detail the pathways of the electrons through those complexes. And we're going to do the same now for complexes 3 and 4. So starting off with complex 3, it's also called coenzyme Q cytochrome C reductase or cytochrome BC1 complex. It passes electrons from reduced coenzyme Q onto cytochrome C through a unique electron pathway called the Q cycle. The coenzyme Q is mobile, meaning that it can move around inside the lipid layer to transfer electrons from complexes 1 or complex 2 onto complex 3. And when we say mobile, we of course mean it's not free to move throughout the entire cell or the entire mitochondria. It is soluble within the lipid bilayer itself. And the coenzyme Q is also known as ubiquinone. So it's important to realize that in some figures we are going to see this nomenclature where it's written as, as UQ and in others they will refer to it as CoQ but we mean the same thing, coenzyme Q or ubiquinone. So the structure of complex 3, it consists of two types of cytochrome B called cytochrome BL and cytochrome BH. It consists of one cytochrome C called cytochrome C1. Now this shouldn't be confused with the mobile cytochrome C, which is going to be where our electrons end up after passing through this complex. It's going to end up on mobile cytochrome C that will shuttle it onto uh, onto our electron transport chain complex 4. This cytogram C1 that we're referring to here is actually part of the complex 3. The complex also has a dimeric structure and contains a so-called RISCA protein, which is the type of mobile iron sulfur protein which is required for electron transport within this complex. So the complex passes electrons from coenzyme Q onto cytogram C3 unique electron uh, transport pathway as we've said it's called the Q cycle and it does this through two binding sites for coenzyme Q so we're going to just talk a little bit about the definitions the nomenclature of these binding sites um, first just to give you a better understanding of how the electron pathway works so just to define we have uh, this terminology called the P phase which actually refers to the intermembrane space. Now remember, if we have our little mitochondria, it has an outer membrane and then it has this hugely folded inner membrane, which of course is very rich in protein, as we've said, and contains these electron transport chain complexes, among others. And the P phase refers to the intermembrane space, that is the space between the outer membrane and this inner membrane. The N phase refers to the matrix, in other words, the very inside of the inner membrane. And the, we, can, we then define the P site, or QP site, as the site um, which is on the intermembrane space side of the lipid bilayer of the inner membrane. And the N site is the matrix side of the bilip or lipid bilayer of uh, the inner membrane. So in other words, when we talk about the QP site, that is the binding site for coenzyme Q on the P side, uh, which is, in other words, closer to the intermembrane phase, and the QN side would be the binding site for coenzyme Q closer to the matrix side of, uh, of the complex. Okay, so how does the Q cycle work? It's basically a two-step process. The first half of the Q cycle starts off with reduced coenzyme Q diffusing through the lipid bilayer and it reaches its binding site, this QP site. Now because only one electron can be transferred onto cytogram C at a time, the reaction mechanism takes place in this two-step process which is the Q cycle. So it's important to remember here that we are now going to switch from two electron transport to one electron transport cytogram C only carries one uh, electron at a time. So step one then involves three substrates. So you have your protein complex and you have three different substrates that are going to bind to it. And this is reduced coenzyme Q, 
which is going to bind at the QP site. This is the oxidized cytogram C, which is going to bind uh, close to cytogram C1 on uh, the complex, and it is oxidized coenzyme Q that we will see comes into play a little bit later uh, that'll bind on the QN site. So we see that coenzyme Q, the reduced coenzyme Q, will bind to its QP site and it'll then become oxidized. So it's going to lose both of its electrons. But the way in which this works is that one electron is going to be passed on to cytogram C. The two protons that it was already carrying is going to be passed into the intermembrane space. And the second uh, electron is going to be passed on through this other pathway. So only one electron directly makes its way onto cytochrome C at this stage. What happens to the other electron is that an oxidized coenzyme Q by this time will have moved into the QN site and it'll receive this second electron that was on the reduced coenzyme Q and it'll form this form of, of coenzyme Q which is called a semiquinone or coenzyme Q anion. So now the first two substrates in other words, the original reduced coenzyme Q, which was bound at the QP site, but which has now become oxidized after losing both of its electrons and um, losing its protons into the intermembrane, in, intermembrane phase, can now uh, leave the QP site and that will allow another reduced coenzyme Q to bind in that site. However, the semiquinone stays bound in the QN site. Now in the second part of the Q cycle, a second reduced coenzyme Q site, uh, coenzyme Q will bind to the QP site and it'll again pass one electron through to cytochrome C, in other words a new reduced cytochrome C has in the meantime bound there and that'll take that electron onto um, the complex 4. Again the two protons are donated into the P phase, into the intermembrane space and the other electron is passed but now there is a semiquinone from the first step in the QN site and when this second electron is received it also takes up two more protons from the matrix side of the membrane and it can now form a f again fully reduced coenzyme Q in this QN site. From there it will be released back into the membrane now that means that the net reaction of uh, what has happened at this stage is that we've started actually in the two steps there were two reduced coenzyme Qs that became oxidized in the QP site okay but because we form another reduced coenzyme Q in the QN site during the Q cycle we see that it is the net result is that it is one coenzyme Q which gets oxidized. Um, two protons that are taken up during the second step is taken in and four protons that were released to at the, the two different steps each um, at the QP site are released. These protons are released into the intermembrane space and then of course the two electrons were passed through this part of the pathway onto oxidized cytochrome C's and we formed two reduced cytochrome C's and from there it can pass those electrons on to electron complex, uh, electron transport chain complex 4. Okay, so now we're going to look at it again just in a little bit more detail because we'll include the actual electron paths through the, uh, through the complex 3. So we break step 1 up into two separate steps so step 1.1 reduced coenzyme Q binds to the QP site that's what's happened over here so in your membrane of course we have a pool of ubiquinones or coenzyme Q's some of them are going to be reduced some of them are going to be oxidized so a reduced coenzyme Q will bind in the uh, QP site of complex 3 the first electron for, follows the pathway from the reduced coenzyme Q onto the iron sulfur centers of the Risker protein, onto cytogram C1 and onto cytogram C, and that's this path that is illustrated over here. And of course that cytogram C can now uh, 
um, decouple and shuttle its electron on to complex 4. The second electron from the reduced coenzyme Q will move on to cytochrome BL and there it is stored temporarily. Protons are pumped into the intermembrane uh, space at this point and now an oxidized coenzyme Q moves into the QN site. So again from the membrane pool of, of ubiquinones or coenzyme Qs an oxidized form of the coenzyme will bind to the QN site. At the same time, uh, the electron that is transferred from cytochrome BL1 to BH, uh, sorry, cytochrome BL to BH, and then onto this oxidized coenzyme Q, so it moves through this pathway onto this oxidized coenzyme Q and it forms this semiquinone intermediate. Now in the second half of the Q cycle, it starts with a new reduced coenzyme Q binding in the QP site. So obviously after becoming oxidized, um, this original reduced coenzyme Q that became oxidized in the QP site in, in the first half of the Q cycle, that gets released once it's oxidized. And that leaves the site open for in the second half of the Q cycle for a new reduced coenzyme Q to come and bind into this site. The first electron is again transferred through exactly the same pathway as we saw up here through the uh, RISCA protein onto cytogram C1 part of the complex and then onto the mobile cytogram C. Protons again are pumped into the intermembrane space and in the, the last part of the Q cycle the second electron that was on this reduced coenzyme Q is passed onto cytogram BL1 onto cytochrome BH and then onto the semiquinone which we formed in this first step and that forms another fully reduced coenzyme Q which can be released back into the membrane. So it's a relatively complex uh, pathway for the electrons to follow but what happens at complex 3 is that it can take up two protons from the matrix side. Uh, the inner membrane of the inner membrane, sorry, the matrix side of the inner membrane, meaning the inside uh, of the, the mitochondria, and it'll release four proteins to the cytoplasmic side for each pair of electrons that passes through the Q cycle. And this offers a convenient way for the two electron carrier, which is coenzyme Q, to interact with all of these one electron carriers that it meets inside complex three. So the cytogram BL and BH hemes, the RISCA protein ion sulfur cluster and the cytochrome C and of course also outside of the complex the, the mobile cytochrome C these are all single electron um, carriers and this is the point in the electron transport chain where we switch from two electron transport to single electron transport and the way that this is done the way that this kind of gear is changed is through this Q cycle pathway. So then just very briefly about cytochrome C, as we've said, it's a mobile electron carrier that shuttles electrons between complexes 3 and 4. The electrons that are, end up on the cytochrome C1 of complex 3 are transferred onto cytochrome C, and that is a water-soluble cytochrome, the only water-soluble cytochrome uh, in this transport chain. And it basically is mobile and diffuses through the intermembrane space to shuttle electrons from complex 3 onto complex 4, specifically from the C1 heme on complex 3 onto the copper A protein of complex 4. So an oxidized cytochrome C will bind to complex 3, receive an electron through the Q cycle and become reduced and that reduced cytochrome C will now go and bind to complex 4, donate its electron, in other words become oxidized and shuttle back to complex 3 and so on. Then the final part of the electron transport chain is complex 4, also called the cytochrome C oxidase. And it accepts electrons from cytochrome C, as we've said, and directs them towards the 4 electron reduction of molecular oxygen to form water. So it'll actually take 4 electrons passed through this complex to interact with molecular oxygen in order to form water. So oxygen then is the terminal electron acceptor or the final electron acceptor in the electron transport pathway. 
Complex 4 also transports protons across the inner mitochondrial membrane and releases them into the intermembrane space. Four protons participate in oxygen reduction and four protons are transported in each catalytic cycle, that being four electrons transported through this uh, complex. So, very briefly, the structure, it has two heme uh, centers. It has cytochrome A and A3. Cytochrome A and cytochrome A3. It also contains two copper proteins, copper protein A and B. And these are associated with cytochrome A and A3, respectively. Now, the copper sites function as one electron carriers and transfers electrons one at a time. So the mechanism, just briefly, cytochrome C is bound to the P side of the complex and it transfers its electron onto copper A, which, and at that point, it dissociates from the membrane and it can shuttle back to complex 3. So this electron is transferred, as we said, onto the copper A protein and that transfers the electron then on to cytochrome A. Cytochrome A transfers the electron to the copper B protein and a second cytochrome C now binds on the P side of the complex and transfers its electron to copper A. And that is then subsequently transferred to cytochrome A and cytochrome A3. Two electrons are now bound at, um, at this site and that allows at this point the binding of molecular oxygen. So we actually need two electrons to be transferred through this pathway before molecular ox oxygen can actually bind to the complex. And two protons are also taken up from the matrix side. The transfer of a third electron is required to cleave the actual bond between the two oxygens which makes up molecular oxygen. And then finally the transfer of a fourth electron through the same pathway allows the formation of hydroxyls. The hydroxyl then becomes spontaneously protonated and dissociates as, uh, from the complex as water. So in this way we've actually gone from through the whole electron transport chain, we finally ended up transferring the electrons on to molecular oxygen and we have now made water which is released. And during that time of course we've harvested the energy from these high energy electrons and we've used that energy to form a gradient of protons across this membrane. So we now have a model for the electron transport pathway. Uh, remembering that we have four protein complexes, complexes one, two, three and four over there and we have two mobile carriers. Ubiquinone being the mobile carrier that shuttles electrons from complex one to complex three and also from complex 2 to complex 3 and the electrons from there are shuttled between complexes 3 and 4 using the other mobile electron carrier cytochrome C. We also recall that at three points in the electron transport chain do we actually transfer protons from the matrix side of the membrane into the intermembrane space and that is at complex 1, at complex 3 and at complex 4 but the free energy at complex 2 is not enough to allow the transfer of protons. So just as an interesting uh, addition, for many years it was thought that these complexes actually, as we've discussed them now, exist uh, and function completely independently from each other in the mitochondrial inner membrane. But there is now growing experimental evidence that supports the existence of multimeric supercomplexes of the four electron transport complexes. These are also called respirosomes and are basically, uh, or, or may actually well be the, the functional states, in other words, the states in which these complexes really exist within the cell. So what is a supercomplex? It's basically the association of two or more of the individual complexes that, that we've discussed. And that might actually be more advantageous energetically to the organism. So just some of the experimental evidence, this is an electron micrograph of a supercomplex formed between complex 1, 3 and 4 and then how people have tried to explain what they see under the electron microscope by modeling the, uh, the protein models of the different complexes together.
Okay, in our next lecture we are going to discuss chemiosmosis theory and oxidative phosphorylation to see exactly how the energy that we've now stored as a protein gradient across a membrane is going to be used to actually produce the ATP.